Alright, in this video we're going to be doing an example in Keysight's Advanced Design System. We're going to be doing an example impedance matching circuit using some ideal transmission lines. So let's start Advanced Design System by going to the Start menu, then ADS 2020. You might have an earlier version, but effectively it's all the same thing. So we could start it up by here. Uh, we can specify a network license server if this is the first time that you are opening the program. So at the time of recording this, it is 27015 at tyke.sends.buffalo.edu. Just hit next. Everything should work fine. You can hit finish and then start the program. So you will be greeted with this screen where you can make your workspace. Everything in ADS is contained within a workspace. So let's hit new workspace. Let's call this example and then let's change it just to my desktop. So let's create the workspace and you'll be greeted with this screen. This is your workspace when you have circuits or data it will show up here. So let's make a new circuit by hitting this icon, the new schematic window. Let's call it whatever we want. I'll just leave it as the default. And now this is the screen where we can start making our circuit. So every component in ADS is within a palette. So here we have the basic components. You have your sources, simulation, transmission lines, and all different kind of stuff. For this example, we will be using an R and an L. You can rotate by hitting Control R. And then a S parameter simulation block. It's called S param. So you don't really need to worry about what S parameters are, but basically we'll be using this to calculate our reflection coefficient gamma. So we also need a Z in block. This will calculate input impedance from this component here, which is a termination. The termination is basically our feed line in this case. So we will, we will also need a T line. This is an ideal transmission line. And then we will need a TLSC, which is a short circuited transmission line. Let's rotate this again, just so it looks pretty. So let's place a ground at both the reference point of our short circuited transmission line and the ground of our inductor. And then we can place our wires by hitting control W and then connecting each terminal here. Hit escape, make that pretty, and then connect this up again. So for this example, our L will be 12.6 nanohenries. Our resistance will be 77.1 ohms. And then this is already solved for you. The effective electrical length of the transmission line is 85.67 degrees, and the center frequency is 2 gigahertz. For the short-circuited transmission line, it is 21.13 degrees and 2 gigahertz. So now we have to tell our S-parameter block what frequencies to solve for. So we're going to do start 1 gigahertz, stop 3 gigahertz, and then let's just do 1001 points. So, now that we have our entire circuit built, we can simulate it. You can do that by either hitting this gear icon up at the top here, or you can hit F7. So here's our results window. All of the results will be displayed in here. We're going to add an equation to calculate gamma. I have this copied down already. So let's look at our reflection coefficient gamma in a rectangular plot. You can add the rectangular plot by just hitting this icon and then placing it wherever you want. Our gamma is going to be in the equations and once you select it it'll ask you what format to view it in. Let's select magnitude and then OK. So this makes sense, right? I hope. Because it is close to 1 outside of its operating frequency range. At its center frequency it is very close to 0 and then it goes back up. So this indicates the matching because when gamma is 1, everything is reflected. When gamma is 0, everything is transmitted, at least in this case. So let, let's also look at 
input impedance. So we can look at Z in here. Let's look at the real part. I'm also going to add the imaginary part. Hit OK. And now this is our input impedance as a function of frequency. We can add a marker by hitting this icon up here. And then let's look at what it is at 2 gigahertz. It's 49.995, which is very close to 50 ohms, which is our feed line impedance. Let's place another marker, look at the imaginary component, which is very close to zero. So you can see our input impedance is just about 50 ohms, which means it's very well matched. Even though this is not required of you for the lab, let's look at it in terms of a Smith chart. So we could plot gamma, hit OK, and see right there it's very close to 1, which means it's very well matched, and then outside of its frequency range the magnitude of gamma gets larger and larger. Okay, so that was an example of how to use ADS to simulate a matching circuit.